Okay, so here is Mouse Chapter 10 Workbook Parsing Exercises. Shall we answer any parsing questions you have about this? It would be advisable to answer any questions you have. Who has a question? Who wants? Who has one they want to walk, walk through, work through? Number four. Okay, Devon. Let's do number four here. We have the word henas. Hanas. So, um, what should we maybe try on for size as some possibilities for uh, whether this is a, a form with case endings? Are there any identifiable case endings you might see? Omicron sigma? Or it could just be a sigma, couldn't it? Here, let's blow this up a little bit more. Okay. So you might might look at this uh, this Omicron here and go, huh, maybe that Omicron is a second declension Omicron. And if that's the case, if that's a second declension Omicron, then the sigma might be a nominative masculine singular form, right? But that would mean this. If this is nominative masculine singular, I must have some word whose lexical form is henos, right? Because the nominative form is always going to be the lexical form of something. Is there a lexical form, henas? And the answer is no. Now, if you're not sure, you could always look it up in the back of your book and go, hmm, let's see if we can find henas as a lexical form. And we won't find henas as a lexical form. Henas is actually an inflected form of a different lexical form. Uh, so we might need to go back to the drawing board and say, okay, maybe it's not just sigma, maybe my case ending is Omicron sigma. And if I assume that, let me just sort of break it apart here, strip it out, then I'm left with hen as a possible stem. Now, would that make sense? Yes, because if Omicron sigma is a case ending, what declension pattern does it follow? It's a third declension case ending, and that means that the noun, there must be a noun right before the case ending. And is there? Excuse me, not a noun. There must be a consonant in front of the case ending. Is there a consonant? Yes, my stem must end with a consonant, and then I add case endings to it. And that's certainly the case. So if I figure out that that's third declension, then os is always what, what case and a number? It's genitive and singular. Now I need to decide, is it masculine, feminine, or neuter? Here's where I have to go back to lexical forms, don't I? What might be the lexical form for henas? Yes, this is that heis, mia, hen lexical form. And so look at the feminine, the middle one. The feminine form is first declension, isn't it? So could this be feminine at all? Since I'm using the hen third declension uh, stem. Now, uh, it could be masculine or neuter possibly, and I have to ask myself, would those two be different from each other? No, genitive and dative form are identical. I would go ahead and put all three because this is an adjective and you ought to know all three. You especially ought to know all three and they should all just go together when you think of the number one because if you don't, you're going to think that Mia doesn't belong with these, right? But you just need to really drill it into your mind. The number one is Heis Mia Hem, Heis Mia Hem, Heis Mia Hem. Heis, what? Yeah. Yeah, pace me ahead. Pace me ahead. Okay, so genitive singular, and it could be masculine or neuter. Masculine or neuter. All right. And oh, so if you were going to translate it, it would be something like using the genitive keyword of one, and then if we had a noun, it would be of one man, of one child, and so forth. Okay. Anyhow, does that help, Devon? Okay, good. So then can you do number seven? I can do number seven. So we have henna. Same thing, right? 
you might look at henna and say, that alpha looks like it could be a first declension noun stem ending with alpha. And if that's what it is, then my case ending after the alpha looks like a zero. And then you would go, that's nominative feminine singular. <laughs> the question is, is, is henna a lexical form on any noun or adjective we have? It's not. We don't have any words henna. Okay? Uh, but we do have some noun or a noun whose stem is hen and for which the alpha must be a case ending. Okay? And if my case ending is ever just an alpha, not, not a zero after a vowel stem alpha, like in first declension nouns, but if the case ending itself is alpha, it's going to be what gender, number? It's going to be, well, it could be accusative or what? Or it could be nominative or accusative, and it could be, nope, plural, plural and neuter. neuter, right? Neuter plurals have alpha in the nominative and accusative. Do you remember this? Do we need to review our sheet? Go back, look at your declensions. Where do I have alphas for my case ending? <clears throat> okay. I could have it here, right? I could have it here. I could have it here. And then, of course, on the neuters, uh, when they're second declension, they could be here. All right. But we're dealing with what declension in this exercise? Third. So I, I, I definitely have neuter plural possibilities. So what about this masculine accusative singular? Let's take a look here. Let's go back uh, to the mouse workbook here. Okay, so Hannah, could that be accusative masculine singular? It could be. Okay. So I've got to change this here to reflect the fact that I've got really three possibilities, don't I? So what we'll do is we'll do something like this. Nominative or accusative, plural, neuter. Let's draw a line here. And then I could also have accusative, singular. Oops, I put, I put my, my gender. Wait, how does he do it? I learn mine differently. Okay, so his genders always go last. Why, why can that be accusative? The neuter doesn't have an alpha at the end. It does in the plural. It drops the A. I mean the alpha. Not in the plural. They say potentially There's it could be an alpha if it's plural. Oh, it's plural. Here. Yeah, see in the plural? Okay. So hen would be the stem, Didn't and I'm adding the alphas. Didn't you say that one like it doesn't have a plural? It can never be plural. What? I'm sorry, say that again. You said it can't be plural. One. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm just being totally theoretical here, okay? Oh, okay. So just looking at the forms. So if that was on a quiz, though, you wouldn't, because, I mean, it's one. Yeah, if you if you only put the accusative singular masculine and not this and argued with me, I'd say, oh, yeah, 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 you're, you're absolutely right here. But I'm just wanting you to see that that case ending could be okay. a neuter plural case ending in the nominative and accusative. And it could be a masculine singular third declension case ending in the accusative. Okay. Right. So the lexical form is going to be haste me a hen, right? Uh, so the the real answer uh, here is going to be accusative singular masculine, just because we wouldn't expect to see haste me and in the plural. All right, good. So um, what else? Other questions on these? Okay, so we have penumata. Penumata. Uh, this is certainly close enough to the lexical form that you should be able to just write in the lexical form. What is that? Penuma. Penuma. You know that word, right? And what does it mean? Spirit. Spirit. Okay. So, um, here's the question. Uh, are, am I seeing the real stem in this inflected form, pneumata? What's the real stem? 
Pneumot. Pneumot. There's my stem, and I can bracket out my case ending then as the alpha. Okay? How do I know that pneumot is the real stem? Well, if I looked at the lexical form and saw the genitive case form that goes with it, I would see matas as the way it ends, and I drop the os and I'm left with mot. Okay? So this is one of those mot nouns, those nouns whose stem ends with mot, and it's what declension pattern? Third, very good. And if it's third declension, then alpha on third declension nouns could be one of three possibilities, right? Could be nominative or accusative, plural, neuter, or accusative, singular, masculine. <clears throat> Should I go with a masculine parsing? No. no. Why not? That's right. Panuma is neuter. Panuma is not an adjective, is it? Haste me a hen. Those are adjectives. So those could be a variety of genders, and we have to allow for that possibility. But panuma is always neuter. So of my choices, only the neuter column is the one that applies here for my alphas, right? I can't even think about this column because panuma is not masculine or feminine. So it's only one of these two, nominative plural or accusative plural neuter. Nominative, accusative, plural, neuter. How would I translate it? Spirits. Spirits. Now my inflected meaning has to indicate that there's that plural form there, right? Mm -hmm. So don't just put spirit. You've got to say spirits. <coughs> Any other parsing questions? Nine. Not nine? So look at Sark C. Um... <clears throat> Here, this word looks very similar to the lexical form, doesn't it? What's the lexical form? Sarks. And in the lexical form sarks, which is nominative, can you tell what the real stem is? No, you can't. So you have to go back to your genitive singular case ending and ask yourself, so what's this form when it's, got, when it's genitive? It's sarcos, right? So sarcos has sark as my real stem. So what declension pattern is this following? It's third. It's third. So <coughs> what I realize is that my true stem is being obscured. So when I see a C like that, what I need to know is that this consists of a sigma with some velar that comes right before it, right? It's some velar. Now I know because of my lexical form and genitive case ending here that that's a kappa. So now if I can distinguish this xi into the kappa and the sigma, I now know that my case ending is really sigma iota. What is that? What is a sigma iota case ending? It's dative plural. And what gender is it? I don't know by looking at the word here. I don't even know by looking at the lexical form. I just have to know the gender of sarks, which is what? Okay. It's feminine. You need to learn hey with it. Hey, sarks. And so we're going to put F for feminine. How would you translate it using the dative idea? To, in, or with flesh or body. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, it's plural. So. So we'll go with bodies instead of fleshes, right? <laughs> it doesn't sound right in English. Mm. So. All right. Let's take a look at warm-up questions real quickly. Are there any specific warm-up questions that you have? Delta, very good. Um, look at delta here. We have tenon anthropon. What what case is tenon anthropon? Yeah, we know it's genitive and plural. Own is always genitive plural, right? Okay. So <clears throat> here's what that might mean. 
that might mean that these are genitive in relation to some head noun. Normally, our head noun comes first, but is it possible for my genitive noun to come before the head noun instead of after? Mm -hmm. In my translation, where, how am I going to translate this? I need to translate the head noun first and the genitive noun second. So it's going to be hai hamartiai is what? The sins of certain people or certain men or of some men. Okay? So my problem here is, is of course, my genitive noun comes first. If I had started with hai hamartiai and put it before, that might have been easier to translate. Okay? So just be aware that sometimes your genitive noun comes before the head. <laughs> Since the accent is on the own, is this the interrogative tis or the indefinite tis? Indefinite. It's the indefinite tis. That's why we're translating it as some or certain, of some or of certain men. Okay? I don't remember how Mount actually translates it in his answer key. Is that, is that what he does? Yeah? Okay. Of some people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beta, uh huh. Yeah, so I have ten agape, ten ace, pantas, tus, hagius. All right. This is tough because you have absolutely no context. But you have ten agape. What case gender number is that? Mm, not genitive. Accusative. Singular, feminine, right? So this is article, noun. And normally I'd have article, adjective, right? But what I have is article, noun, article, prepositional phrase. This is one of those situations where, remember how we saw the article in front of a prepositional phrase, and the prepositional phrase is basically functioning like an adjective, like an attributive adjective. The love, the to all the saints. How would you translate the love the, to all the saints? Where this is modifying the love we're talking about. The love that is. Yeah, you could translate it as the love that is to or toward all the saints. Or the toward all the saints kind of love. Okay. <coughs> yes, question? Can you say in all the saints? Like the love that is uh, well, yeah, we would need more context to know. I think the idea here is that it's a love that is directed toward all the saints. Or the love which is unto or for all the saints. Um, what did he say? Does he say among? The love among all the saints. The love among? I, I don't know which passage this is talking about, so we just really have to have a little more context to know. Usually, ace is motion or movement towards something. So, how, that would be the most basic meaning. How um, do you know if it's used as an adjective or a noun? Which one? Um, Huggy used? Yeah, 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 that's hagius. Okay, so this is from the lexical form hagias, right? Mm -hmm. Which has hagias, hagia, and hagian. Three termination adjective. How do I know <clears throat> that this is a substantival use? Because that's the way I'm translating it. It's, an, it's uh, to all the saints, not to all the holy and it's functioning merely as an adjective. How do I know that? If it were really functioning as an adjective, what would I need to accompany the, na the adjective? Mm -hmm. I need a noun, and it would need to agree with that noun in case, gender, and number. <coughs> but there's not a noun here, mm -hmm. right? If I had tus hagius anthropus, then I would take it as an adjective, an attributive adjective. But when it is functioning as the noun, since there isn't a noun that it modifies, then it's functioning substantively. 
so to all the saints. All right. Any any other questions on on our homework here? On number one, not the one, but the translation. Mm -hmm. I put they are all going towards him, and he put everyone is going towards him. Well, you said they are all right. Mm -hmm. They right. are all. No. Because he put, they are going is the translation. Mm -hmm. He changed the word to everyone. Well, remember, he always translates verbs with a, with a pronoun, right? right? Mm -hmm. But if you have a form that could be the explicit and overt subject, then you use the noun that's in the nominative case as the subject instead of they. That's why I put all instead of everyone. I mean, like, I guess yeah. I'm just asking, is that right, too? They so are Pontus... All. Could be all. This is nominative, yeah. right? It's masculine and plural. But he put everyone. I don't know, I don't well, know all, all, everyone. Yeah, I mean those are those are possible. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So all are going. Everyone. Well, everyone's singular, but I mean you understand that, right? I think I would have said all are going. All are going to, to him. So you could say they are. All going to him. Um, to make it make more sense? It's possible. I don't think, I wouldn't say it makes more sense. I mean, it doesn't make more sense than saying all are going. It's just that all is functioning, it's an adjective that's functioning substantively, right? If it's the subject, if this adjective pos in this form is the subject, then it's an adjective functioning substantively. As the noun, and then it would be all are going. Well, I mean that—that's your English preference. I understand right, right, that. Right, right, right. that. That's your English preference. There is a way to say something like, um, you know, literally pronoun they plus all, and then the verb, and then I would say there you really ought to translate it as they all are going. But that, that isn't what we have here. I'm not saying that yours is like completely a bad translation. I'm just saying it's not required, neither by the Greek nor the English. Right, right, right. Yeah. All right, good. Well, we'll stop there. And... Uh, mm,